the internet just opened up all kinds of other possibilities. It's one of the areas that I've been thinking about ever since leaving DARPA in 1986 was what what is the equivalent of for what we did for moving bits to managing information as a logical extension of the internet. And so we've been developing something called the digital object architecture, which I think has those primitives because it's independent of the underlying technology and should be able to scale indefinitely in every dimension that I now know of. Send in a message, say we're supposed to go, it would be broken into packets, and then they get reassembled at the other end and delivered. Well, where would it be delivered? You'd address a wire on the net. So send it to what's ever connected to that wire. In the ARPANET case, it was a computer, so you knew exactly where it was going. In the internet world, you suddenly had a wire from the ARPANET went to another network, which might have lots of computers. And in fact, that network might send it to another network. And so how do you identify who this is supposed to go to? That's why we introduced the notion of an IP address. This was something Vint and I worked on um, together. What Wozencraft did was make it very clear to me that if you wanted to be successful at a place like MIT, being smart wasn't sufficient. Everybody here is smart, he said. And so you've got to distinguish yourself in some way. And the thing we value the most is making a difference in society. I, I think there's going to be a future that, that uh, is wide open to the younger generation. Exercise your imagination. You know, try to have uh, the confidence that the uh, things that you can imagine can be made to happen, seek out ways of making them happen, and trust your instincts.